things that I wanted them to do. So just take a look at them, and uh, that's a, a little bit there. And get that started. The uh, the uh, W4DXCC conference is Friday and Saturday. Uh, this is the uh, Saturday uh, session. You can see the topics there. Uh, Bovey, Baker Island, uh, I Can't Work DX for the Noise. What's DX from Chile like? Uh, and for uh, the WRTC that was a few weeks ago, Scott Robbins. And those of you that don't know, Scott is Mr. Vibraplex Kier and several other entities uh, at his company up in Knoxville. Uh, the Friday session is uh, what they call the boot camp. Uh, I just told Dave, this session <coughs> is where everybody that has 300 or better on their DXCC shows up. Uh, this session is for those of us who are working toward 300 plus on the DXCC list. And uh, I'm working on number three. Well, whatever, <laughs> wherever you are. That's where you teach the at, radio one. At, <laughs> at the banquet, we always get to meet Fred, whose count is 391. Now, Fred's about 89 years old, and he must have got licensed when he was four and a half. But he has worked 391 countries. They were laughing at him last year, and they said he had found the card for 392, but he lost it before he got it qualified. Uh, I don't know if that was fact or just harassment, but just to, to show you where that is, today the current count is 340 DX countries. So he has worked all of those and 50 that are no longer countries in his 70, 80 year ham career. Uh, Steve, can I make just one correction? I don't think countries, I think they call entities. Mm -hmm. right? That will work. Because some of them are islands that are probably not a lot bigger than this uh, room. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say a few of them. A few of them are not a lot bigger than this room. Some of them aren't much bigger than that table. I, I have seen a picture of one that I don't think is on the list anymore, where there were some pilings and there were some boards across, and you didn't see any dirt. The ocean was under the boards. That's so, a qualifier. Sure. So uh, anyway, that's 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 what that's all about. Um, let's see. let's get started on the QSL uh, presentation. I've got uh, two or three things that I will pass around. Uh, a little bit later in the in the process. I guess I can start with these. These are uh, some cards that came in at the house last week. These are the cards that are the appropriate recommended by the IARU for our region two size. These are the cards that are the size Dan likes to use. <laughs> <laughs> That are not the recommended size. I've harassed him ever since I saw his first card. I'll harass him till I see one of his cards that's that size. So, Steve, what is the recommended size? That size right there. Measure it. <laughs> five and a half. Okay. I believe that's what it is. We're going to see that in one of these uh, pieces of uh, information here. Uh, I used to put QSL cards on, on my board in my ham shack. And I and I had I finally went from this wall to this wall and this wall. I had one guy, Leo Meyerson, that had World Radio Laboratories in Council Bluff sent me one that was about one and a half sizes too big. And you know that screws up your whole pattern. I almost almost couldn't put them on my wall because he did that. <laughs> 
These, these, these are the U.S. cards that I've received over the last year or two that I haven't put anywhere else. You see the ones that are the recommended size? And you see the ones that are a pain in the <laughs> to do anything with? They don't fit in the ball holders. They don't fit in the notebooks. Unless you pay the extra price to get one of those sheets that will hold the three at a time. I'll get off of my uh, soapbox on card size till we see some reference here later on. Ah, uh, QS Selling by our buddy Ed from up in Canada. You've taken the plunge, made your first QSO. Now what do you do? Well, he wrote this about 10 or 12 years ago, but it applies tonight to us. With all the new hams we have in the club, this is an appropriate time to review what QS Selling is all about and describe the options. Uh, what? Charles, you gonna make the presentation? No. Okay. What is QSL? From the basic qualification, that's the Canadian version instruction class, you may recall QSL is one of the Q codes you had to learn. I think I used to have to learn some of those. I'm not sure they're on the test today. I hadn't looked at the test, I just administered them here later. Uh, QSL can mean two things. QSL means either do you confirm receipt of my transmission or I confirm receipt of your transmission. So it can come QSL with a question mark or it can just come QSL. QSL card is a written confirmation of a QSO, which is another one of the Q codes. Let's see. Why do we do this? And this is kind of good introductory. We're going to hopefully answer and address some of these as we go through the rest of it. The reason you send the QSL card. Request a QSL card that will be confirmation used to apply for an award. Because you believe a QSL card is the ultimate courtesy of a QSO, and the QSO is not complete until the QSL card has been sent. Uh, this is kind of the way I feel about it, and pretty much this is the old school, the 40 year ago, that was the thought process. That's where everybody lived. Uh, rules have kind of changed in the last few years. Uh, with LOTW and other electronic media, that can be done without actually sending a physical paper card. Uh, next reason, because during your QSO, your partner requested a QSL card. Because you received a card confirming a QSO, and the card said, please QSL. QSL cards are a confirmation of your contact and a great conversation piece. There are some very impressive QSL cards being sent by the world's amateurs. QSL cards also give you bragging rights to demonstrate your accomplishments. And if you look through these books, and they're up here for y'all to look at when we get done, come take a look. Um, let me tell you, talk about what's in each one of these. This one is the 13 <laughs> colonies, if you've just Finished that a few weeks ago. I've got two or three years worth of those cards plus the ones I've received from this year. Uh, this book has the, the people that are in the neighborhood, uh, old friends from a long time ago. Uh, if you've spent much time on 52 Simplex, you know who N4ALW is. Uh, Got a picture of his fire tower right here. Huh, somebody, W4DTO? Let's see that card. I don't know. <laughs> That's one of them big ones in that thing. Three, uh, three cards that she holds. Got a special place in there. <laughs> you, might, you might recognize that call sign. But these are, these are friends, buddies, acquaintances, neighbors. Uh, 
WD4 or PAQ? Anybody know him? Uh, K4GK. There's probably a few people do some Sunday dance. I've heard that cop. I told him about every, whatever, third Thursday night at the DX Club meeting. Um, but this some, and you might recognize this little airplane on this picture. And I've got to talk with him about his color choices up here because they leave a little to be desired. KM4 PGB for those who can't read that. He's being Roger's He's what? He's being retrained. Yeah, he said he would probably. We might see him sometime starting about now. Uh, Route 66 uh, and uh, I take the local stuff out. I have a lot of school cards in here, high schools, grammar schools, colleges. That's one of the pretty neat collections that I have. Six meter contacts, uh, Spanish soccer, that was where the 13 colonies used to live. And this book has all the certificates in it, along with a fresh one for W4T that's already got in the holder ready to go in the book. This one's DX contacts. Uh, one of these wall hanging collections, uh, well, look at that call up at the top. You ever heard of that guy before? <laughs> uh, one of these is JP65 uh, contacts, and the other one is just a collection of cards that I keep hanging up. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's some of the Kind of the last two things there, confirmation of contact, conversation piece, bragging rights. I have a book that has my DXCC cards in it. I wasn't going to bring that tonight. That's kind of a special and guarded, shall we say, book. Uh, that's where I keep my tracking. I am, according to my logging program, at 199 stations or entities work. Confirmed. I worked 210, I think was the number the last time I looked. Working on confirmation, working on finding some more to add to both sides of that. Um, so let's get into the uh, presentation here. Um, Here we go. We just talked about that a minute ago. I'll let you read that right quick and we'll just move on. Uh, courtesy, awards, tradition. Uh, I've seen some pictures of some cards with uh, back in the teens and 20s and 30s when the process just started. Uh, you know, really need to look at those cards. <laughs> I didn't say I was there when they were written. I've just seen the things. Uh, what do we put on a QSL card? And if you look at those that I passed around, you'll see uh, the uh, items that you're looking for. I had a QSO with this call, this day, this month, this year. UTC time. Don't even think about using anything other than UTC time. That's the GMT, Universal, whatever, Zulu. Any of those terms apply to that. That is the universal time for ham radio communication contact tracking. Frequency, what mode were you on? Sideband, FM, CW for Chuck and David. Uh, and the signal report. Your call sign should be printed or written on the report side of the card. If you get cards made, you really, 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 really want all the information on one side of the card. You don't want somebody to have to look at this side of the card to find your call as they would on my peach right here and look at the other side and have no clue who this 
card came from. You want all of the information on one side of it. Back in, uh, let's see if we look right here under the staple. Back in 1985, when these cards were printed, I had nothing to do with the design. Probably didn't know any better back then anyway. So. But uh, other things you might want to put on the card, you're a member of a club, organizations, affiliations, email address, war return, previous calls, help. Uh, I've got the uh, ARRL, I've got the 1010, uh, I've got Aries on the, one of the cards. You always want your grid number, six digit grid number, CQ zone, ITU zone, your county, uh, real pertinent items for, uh, for other folks you're going to communicate with. Their contest, that require the, either of the zones, depending on which contest you're on. There, there is uh, a lot of people who are collecting counties, county hunters. There's a little over 3,000 counties in the United States, and there are folks that have worked every one of them. There are folks that go out and ride around to put counties on the air to help others work every one of them. So you want that on your card. I've gotten a number of cards from QSOs that folks said, you're the first Paulding County contact I've ever made. Please send me a card. Um, because you send QSL cards to people all over the world, there are things you don't want to put on the QSL card. Uh, Anything, you see the, the items there. I will uh, back up and say that uh, I'm going to pass this around. And I've got a note right here, you will understand. On the back side is an example of just not a really good design. And just take a look at both sides of that and pass that around. Um, basic QSL design. Damn. Let me get my red pointer. <laughs> Standard QSL size. <laughs> I'll email this to you. <laughs> it would be nice if you had done it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have all of them. <laughs> I, I, I will say Dan is, is a wonderful and dear friend and I have harassed the snot out of him and much love <laughs> but I will use him as a bad example <laughs> uh, yeah I, 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 I promise not to do it again for at least 30 seconds. <laughs> well, if, if we run across another reference to card size, I'll be right it'll, it'll I'll kick be back you. Uh, things to put on the QSL call. Call sign of the other station, time and date, UTC for both. And just in case you're wondering, this is not 8-7. This is 8-8. Eight, eight. Zero, zero, 31, oh, 08, oh, 08. Um, and that's a confusing thing for a lot of folks. That UTC time is in tomorrow already. Uh, you just got to make your clock when you're in front of the radio be UTC. Period. Four hours, four hours. Right now it's four. Minus four right It'll now. be five in a couple of months. Just put the clock on UTC and don't worry about trying to subtract the numbers. Most of the time, it's the case. It's really on the card. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll get the UTC right, but it's the seventh instead of the eighth. Uh, this is a real <coughs> critical to the guy receiving your card. He's depending on your county or your zone or your whatever for an award. If you make a mistake, crossed out or written over information will disqualify <coughs> any card being submitted toward an award. If you make a mistake, throw it away and do it again right. <coughs> If you're sending QSL cards through a QSL manager or through the Bureau, indicate using the QSL via with the uh, QSL manager's name. We're going to talk about the Bureau in a little bit. Um, circle the please or mark out the please if you're thanking the guy for a QSL card. Circle to please QSL, scratch out the thanks so that the guy knows, yes, I want a card or I got your card and I appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Um, send the card through the QSL bureaus to a QSL manager. We'll talk about the bureau some. Uh, manager a little bit and uh, direct mail. QSL Bureau, or as it's usually shortened to the Bureau or the Borough, uh, it's the least expensive. You get a good return rate. It just takes a long time. <coughs> I sent a stack of cards about that thick <coughs> and a couple of weeks ago, when I, or a week ago, when I started working on this, I was like, ah, why didn't I make some pictures as I put that package together? But I did. Uh, well, when we get in the bureau side of it, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I don't expect to see a reply to any of those cards for nine to 12 months. And I expect for the 9 to 24 months to see responses coming back from them. That seems to be about the way that goes. Uh, disadvantages, it's not time sensitive. <laughs> That's a gross understatement. Uh, not all DX stations use the Bureau. Um, QSL managers are people who manage QSL cards, and some of them are in the U.S. managing QSL cards for <coughs> in foreign countries. Uh, if you get one of those, that is the cheapest way to get a DX card, because you use U.S. postage to send it to it. First class stamp goes, first class stamp on your SASE to come back. Um, that's the easiest way, that's the least expensive way to problem. You pay postage both ways, excellent return rates, fairly good turnaround time. Overseas, excellent return rates, it's more expensive over there, a lot faster in general than the QSL Bureau. You pay postage both ways. What you will see as we go through these is you will see a uh, you will see references to IRC. International Reply Coupon. And if you go in your post office in downtown this city and ask them for an IRC, they're going to look at you like you've got one big green eye right here. They are kind of, they were at one time. Just a minor correction, IRC is International Registered Currency. No. It is an International Reply Coupon in this case. You take that and you go, and days gone by, 
you send one of those to somebody over in France, they take that down, they get first class postage from the French post office for that coupon. And they put it on the envelope and send your card back. But they are harder and harder to find, to deal with. More and more post offices internationally have stopped using them or accepting them. Uh, everything I've seen says don't use them. Uh, foreign post too. What? They keep changing them too. I've got like three different old types. Yeah. They've and been sent back to me because they were old types. And they are they are date sensitive. They only are good for a year, year and a half. So don't go buy a wheelbarrow full unless you've just worked the expedition. You know you're gonna send them all out in a day. Uh, I've seen references to buying French stamps to send to the guy over in France along with your card so he can mail it back with his currency. Uh, that's not generally recommended. Uh, number one, who knows what stamps are good in which country on which day. And uh, the grain stamps and the cash, uh, that in general works real well, except I got this envelope back. You can read what it says on there <coughs> and uh, understand that green stamps or cash doesn't work everywhere all the time. QSL direct, 99% return rate, well, I'll probably say 90 to 95 my experience. Most expensive way to QSL, you pay postage both ways. You use foreign postage on the SAE for best return rate. And once again, we just went there. And that's a recommendation that's not necessarily um, the, uh, the, the, the thing to do. As far as the expense, uh, let's just take a card from Germany or one of these cards over here, for example. I want a QSL from that guy. I worked him. I look him up on QRZ. I've got his mailing address. I take an envelope this size. I put his address on it. I put international stamp on it. I put an envelope inside. I put my QSL card inside. I will put two or three dollars inside. By the time I put the dollar and fifteen cent right here, by the time I buy this envelope, the other envelope, my QSL card, I'm four to five dollars for a DX card. That's just what it takes. Some of them, they'll tell you on their QRZ site, $2. Some of them, they will say $3. It's gradually over the last few years, I see more threes and less twos. Postage in other countries is doing, the, going in that direction. Uh, that's what we see. So, some countries are still legal to own U.S. dollars. Yeah, I think that's that's what happened with that envelope right there. Uh, other people will tell you, only send me brand new, shiny, crisp, never been touched dollar bills. <laughs> I've got any number of those kinds of requests. And I periodically will go by the bank and get a pack of one dollar bills if I can catch them with some brand new ones. So I've got some to fulfill. You know, I pull one out of my pocket. You know, I think about it. I want this guy to send me a card. This doesn't really look good to, to go on the request. So I understand. You know, that, the goal is to get him to send his card back to me. Uh, Right legibly, use QSL labels. I've got a little uh, dymo printer. I print my labels. 
you can see the labels that were on these cards that went around. If you notice those, that's, I print those. I also use that to print the uh, address that I'm sending it to. So it's clean, clear, no doubt about it. Don't write call signs on the envelopes. When WB4, excuse me, that was the old one, K4ELI is on the return address label, that's a flag to a lot of people and a lot of post offices and a lot of the world that there might be a greenback or three in this envelope. It doesn't take much to trigger them and there are most countries I have gathered doing this for a while that the post office is way less stellar than what we have. So know that if you put your call sign on the envelope, now I'll do it in the U.S., I'm not worried about the U.S. post office. Uh, and I will put on the reply, a lot of times I will put a couple of letters or something so when the mail comes and I look at that envelope, I know where it came from, or at least I've got a clue. Uh, You'll see a lot of don't send cash, but you'll see a lot of, when you go on QRZ, $2 and a self-addressed envelope, $3 and a self-addressed envelope. Put the money in your envelope, send it to them, you'll get a card. If you want the card, that's what you do to get it. If they were the Bureau, and we'll talk about that in a minute, well, we're going to have to go quick if we talk about that in a minute. Um, there's very little expense involved, but it might be two years and it might be now. The electronic process that we have today, LOTW, we talked a little bit about that last month or month before. How many of you in here are actively using LOTW? How many of you are actively making contacts and you want to start using LOTW? I know there's one right there. <laughs> Raise your hand, Stan. Uh, James has been making contacts a while and hadn't gone through the process. Yell at me, I've got some information on there. I'll come and sit down and help you work through the process. Isn't that right, Tommy? Mm -hmm. And we'll get you on there. Uh, this playing QSL cards, well, here's two methods right here. And then I've got this. And then some of us have a really nice looking box that I forgot to ask them, will you bring your QSL collection over this play box? And I failed to send Dan that email. What size uh, cards does it hold? <laughs> it, it holds. It's a compromise. You know. <laughs> it holds them big crappy ones too. Uh, the big ones that are easy to see. Uh, <laughs> that. Uh, the, I'm you, Dan. I need a large print. <laughs> the, the, uh, the rest of these things pretty much say what we've just said uh, in a different way and maybe with a little more detail here or there. Uh, I'm going to uh, get with Larry and we've probably got some of these documents on the website from three years ago because I did this three years ago. Uh, we will uh, get the rest of them on there so you can look and spend more time. And Dan can go look up how big QSL cards are supposed to be. Uh, to find the information on QSL cards, you come down here under on the air on the AWRL homepage. 
QSL service. This is where you find your special event stations. It's where you find uh, your award information. Uh, somewhere on there, and I don't see it right now, contest. There are the contest. Logbook of the world. So that's, that's where you find all of this stuff. Uh, Can I ask you a question, Steve? Yes. Do you find that flight working FTA, about 95 to 98% will only use LOTW to verify yeah. an FTA contest? Well, I, I haven't worked very many of those that I have wanted to send a card to. And I have my FT8 filter set so that in JT Alert, the only thing that shows up there are LOTW users. Right. So, so I don't even work. I mean, anymore. I only get like, well, I can tell you, out of, out of 3,700 con FT8 contacts, I've gotten six cards. Yeah. Through the mail. You'll get a few. So. One, of, one of the recent ones I got was. Uh, I want a card from Paulding County. You're the first Paulding County contact I've ever made. Hmm. It was county hunting. So uh, you look right here when we get the other slide. That's what the outgoing QSL service looks like up at ARRL headquarters. There is a box for every outgoing bureau that they send cards to. Those are in alphabetical order uh, by the call sign. When you get to the G for Great Britain, under the G's in the G box, they will have the M's and all the other calls that are part of the Great Britain call group. They all go when you put your cards together under the G card that you have in there. If they're Great Britain cards, they're all together. They get your pack of cards and they start on one end of that array of shelves and they take the first ones and they put them in. They take the second ones, they put them in. They take the third ones. So when you get down to F, under your French cards, you're going to have the T cards, or the TMs, I can't remember, there's a couple of prefixes that they use. You'll have FT and TM before you get uh, a card with a G for the Great Britain. Um, but that's what, that's a picture of what that looks like. So they get a, a package of cards and they will send the Great Britain cards, they package them up. They send them over to the English version of that, the RSGB Bureau, and they disperse them out to the hams in Great Britain. Um, let's see if we can find, here we go. Um, let's talk about the incoming, because there's another area up there where all the cars come in. Uh, they come in there, they're sorted by call signs, they're sorted by call areas, they're sorted by uh, number one area call signs, and Dan leaves, and I was going to talk about him right here. If you say I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll save my comments for when you come back. Uh, and the fourth area, call... Uh, Incoming call bureau is divided into two sections. There are, as a group, for all the fourth area call signs with a single letter prefix. There is a uh, group for all the call signs with a two letter prefix. Um, Carolina DX Association uh, takes care of all the single letter prefix calls. Um, you can go in here, you can type in your uh, call.
There's no information found. Some of the card sorters, and Chuck's best friend is Bud, W4CZU, that's his card sorter. Um, Dave has George, W4BUW. George happens to be my sorter as well. George is the neatest guy going. I've met him the last two years at W4DXCC. And George gets me off on the side. The first time I saw him, we talked about 20 minutes. He says, Steve, you know you're not going to have to worry about ever going on the de-expedition. I looked at it. He's South Carolina. He makes me sound fast when he talks. <laughs> All right? George looks at me and he says, Steve, yeah, talk too slow to go on the expedition. Uh, love him to death. I've got a picture of him. I tried to find it last night. I couldn't. Uh, we're looking up card status to see, and some of the card sorters have information on here, like this for Dan. Uh, Dan <laughs> actually works somebody. <laughs> one car on one. And they sent him a card. <laughs> wow. Well, Great they, concept. They just delivered a truckload the other day. <laughs> Dan has no envelopes for Don to work with. He has no money up there for Don you know, to work with. The funny thing is, I sent Don stack of envelopes and I've gotten cards from him one time. Yeah. 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 He's funding his vacation home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he used to be my card shorter and he ain't no more. Yeah. <laughs> Work diligently to get him get in touch with him. Find out what the status is. Tell him you have been here. And you know you have sent some cards. I will see the guy that does this and his wife and the Carolina DX Association, they will be. That before DX season. I talked with them about Larry's stuff last year. I got a new card sorter. <laughs> he got a new card sorter out of cards. Um, and money in the bank all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, right. So Get that together. Get it to me a couple of weeks before. That. We'll uh, we'll work on that. This is this is on a AARL website. Yes. Um, let's back up if we can get back out of here. I've got a link to it on our website too. As well. uh, this this is the guy right here. I, uh, I didn't talk with Paul directly, but I talked with his wife, and she sounded like she runs the show anyway. <laughs> and it worked. Things worked for Larry. Uh, and ours is out of Virginia. Ours is out too. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Sterling Park Group does a whole different process. I just wanted to show you at least one of them to see. The, the incoming process. They do something similar, but uh, since I hadn't been concerned, I don't have looked at their details. You wanted to pick at me one more time. What? So you wanted to pick at me one more time. Uh, <laughs> certainly. This is, and uh, we're, uh, we're pretty much at the end of the, the clock time here. This is the instructions for how to prepare the package to send it to the AWRF. You can use the incoming QSL Bureau whether you are a member or not. You cannot send a card unless you are a member. One of the things that you include in your package 
is uh, a copy of the mailing label off of your QST. And that's the proof they're looking for. Uh, so if you so opted out of getting a hard copy of QST, yeah, look. <laughs> I have a question. I don't know what you do. Uh, they just said you just write down your member number. Yeah. Uh, I only have one QST label. How would I work that with my wife? Well, isn't she a member? Does it, does it say family? I, yeah, I don't know. I think you may can send, you and her both can send cards together yeah. under that. Yeah, I don't know why not. Because we're both members, but we only get one QST. Right? Yeah. But Larry just said, yeah, I mean, you just put your member down. So, yeah. John, how many cards do you think are in the Bureau for you? Here, I mean, I'm, just, I'm just one. I mean, I'm just one. Zero. I didn't think to, I should have checked what I was on today. Right, right here, John. Family members use the service by enclosing their QSLs with those of the primary member. Okay. Include the appropriate fee with each individual's cards and indicate family membership on the primary member's proof of membership. Oh, I see this right here. Yeah, that's uh, I don't get one. <laughs> I got a call from uh, Bobby down in East yeah. Point. How's he doing? Well, the reason we hadn't heard him for a while is he's been working about 60 hours a week. The reason he called me is sometime in the next couple of three months, he's going to retire and he's going to move to Atworth Woodstock area. I think actually in the Woodstock area somewhere. And uh, he asked that a couple of us come down and take down the antenna we put up for him a year or so ago. <laughs> so uh, I've been meaning to say that. He called me probably a week ago. And he said sometime in the next two or three weeks if, if we could make that happen. So I'll be getting in touch with a couple of you to see if we can go down there and undo what we did for him. And, Hope where he goes, he can be on the hillside. I told him, look for a place on the top of a hill. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back to this. Uh, this is this is where you go to find the information. Uh, and we will. Uh, I'll back up one time, Rick, right here, and hopefully we'll uh, find that. Yeah. Uh, QSL service, yeah, right here on the front page. Right, Q, QSL service. I see it. Thank you. That's uh, that's where you go to start. Spend, spend. And, uh, and to send cards in, you have to be a member. Right. To receive them, you don't have to. But you have to have an envelope up there. But you have to send them an envelope. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going, and there's some instructions on what. Yeah, I'm just, I was just curious. Uh, if I remember right, your call goes right here. Yeah. Okay, 4-E-L-I. I'll put a once or, or a forever stamp, one stamp right here. And I'll send six or eight cards and a $5 bill. And he can buy extra stamps. You mean six or eight in Six, yeah, six or eight, ten envelopes, and I don't have to worry about it for a year or more. And you know, periodically I'll send George an email if I've gotten some envelopes. Hey, George, what do you still have? And a week or two later, I'll get a response back. And you know, I, I keep cards. I uh, was looking through my records and I found I also have cards in for the W4RSC call. Got a couple here a week or two or three, well, a month or two ago. Got an envelope from them, so I made I checked to make sure we still had some envelopes up there. So 